You have to wait until the next vlog to see how I feel about this. But here's where I leave you for now. I can't find my vlog camera, which just goes to show how out of practice I am, but I just posted my first video back and I'm watching the comments roll in live. I'm like about to cry. Rosie's here with me and I'm like, stunned by how many people still had notifications on and were like, I can't believe it. Oh, thank you for coming back. I was kind of nervous. Finally just ripped the bandaid. Here we are. <laughs> with the positive reception of my last vlog. I wanna clarify a few things because I think I might have given a weird impression. I said that I came back because my therapist suggested it, but also I've wanted to, like obviously. I've just been scared to come back and talking through it with my therapist and my friends. Shout out Sarah, Olivia, Shelby have helped. So yes, I'm ready to come back. Anywho, I mentioned at the end of my last vlog that I started my Dark Vanessa, a book that is currently overdue at my library. I am, oh wait, I got past this last night. Ew, Ugh. okay, I just read like the worst scene in this book and I just opened it back up to the scene. Anyway, the way that I would describe this book so far is that it is a response to the Me Too movement or maybe not even a response to, like in addition to a zeitgeist of. <laughs> it's set in a split timeline between like 2017 and the early 2000s about this 15 year old who goes to boarding school and gets in a relationship that's not even how it should be described is molested by her teacher it is difficult <laughs> right now i'm a bit torn about it because obviously like we're getting most of it is the flashback scenes of her as a child feeling like oh i'm so powerful this man is interested in me and not understanding like yeah the man is a creep just like being groomed and gaslit by him and it's so sad but whenever it switches to the perspective of her now in her 30s she like still talks to him. The whole crux of it is a different student has now come out and said like, hey, he assaulted me. And so it's like the downfall of this professor now that the women who were previously afraid to speak up are saying things. And so this main character is having to decide, oh my entire life I thought this was something consensual and it made me feel good, but then there were parts I was conflicted about because he was also pretty forceful. So, I mean, obviously major trigger warning for this. I've not read Lolita, it's on my list. I don't know if I should have read it before this or the other way around. I'm enjoying this. Isn't that crazy to say? I mean, this book is hard to enjoy, but I'm liking the purpose of it and the way that this character is having to realize what she went through, through now the lens of like women banding together to have the truth come out. Again, I'm only like less than halfway through, so. And it's on Kindle Unlimited, which is the only not depraved book I've read on Kindle Unlimited. Could this be described as depraved? Probably. I mean, I guess while you're here, let's complete your storyline. So in my last vlog, I said that I got Mr. Sharp because he's one of my cat's siblings. Some commenters very realistically pointed out that I did not even explain why I have him. My parents took two of the other kittens that Rosie and Gordo are siblings with. One of them was Sharpie. But then they moved to somewhere where they could only take two cats. The problem is they already had a cat. The options were either give him to my aunt and uncle who were moving to Colorado and I didn't want him to go all the way to Colorado and be an outdoor cat. Find a friend to take him, which no one really wanted him. Or 
I could keep him. Supposedly it's temporary, I haven't decided. He's kind of a fart. He's mean to Rosie. I mean, he and Gordo both are, but she's dramatic and doesn't want any of them playing with her. But that's the full story. I'm sorry I cut it out and left you hanging. The old insecurities are creeping back in because I was like, oh, I don't want to put on a tank top to go to bed because I know I'm going to need to film this clip and I know I don't look good in tank tops on camera, but like, I'm not going to not wear my bisexual Bucky shirt. So, hi. Um, this is random and I probably should be in bed because I have to work from home tomorrow, but not one but two people asked for a Christmas haul, which is enough for me to say yes. 2012 beauty guru culture has never left my heart, so allow me this one indulgence. I'll go quick. Shelby and I exchanged presents. If you don't know who Shelby is, she was in my last vlog new bestie i have no idea what this is i wrapped these two days ago it's oh <laughs> and oh, you left in my car <laughs> She got me a couple things. One of them was a bunch of stuff from Lush, which I already have in my bathroom because I'm currently using it and I love Lush stuff, more to come on that. She also got me a travel makeup brush kit, which is amazing. The only person who got me a book for Christmas. So she gave me Part of Your World by Abby Jimenez, which she has already read and loved. I loved The Friend Zone by Abby Jimenez and she hated it. We kind of swapped interests here, but she insists that this one's good even though it's fade to black. All I know about it is that it's this woman, I almost said a woman who's a doctor. This book Books about a woman who's a doctor. <laughs> I guess it's not sexist. She is a woman and a doctor. Those are just two facts. It's like she's never had to do anything for herself in her life, so she doesn't know how to like cook or clean or anything like that. And then she has to move to a small town. That's all I know. Thank you, Shelby. Um, and then she also got me sticky tabs. Okay, from my family on Christmas, I got like three main big gifts. I got a toaster from my grandparents, which is so cute. I got a new trash can. And then I also got a Dutch oven so I can make soups and stuff. So excited to have those. Here's the other little, th I don't want to say little. Here's the other things that I got. One of them that I would consider a big gift is this perfume trio from Marc Jacobs. Love this perfume. I needed a pepper grinder, so I got this copper one, which is so cute. I got a new brush. It's yellow, my favorite color. I'm not ready to unwrap the Taylor Swift conversation that's gonna need to happen about concert tickets and stuff, but my mom got me a concert survival pack for Taylor Swift. I've stuffed it with all the other presents I got, so it wasn't this full, which was so cute. It just had like earplugs and emergency and like a necklace that says all too well on it, so I'm ready to go see Taylor. Yes, I got tickets. <laughs> I'll talk about it later. This shower body oil from L'Occitane that I have been dying to try. My cats have the zoomies. Fake nails that look really cute, but I don't really wear fake nails, so we'll see how this goes. <laughs> okay, can we zoom me without a tack sister? Thank you. My mom also got me a travel sized blush brush. And then my sister went balls to the walls at a Lush store and got me everything on my wish list. So I got a Twilight bath bomb, Twilight body scent. Even my smell. These three body washes, which I'm obsessed with. This one, oh my God. And then a face mask. I'm pretty sure this is supposed to go in the fridge, but I don't have it there. That's my Christmas haul. Hope you enjoyed the haul, because I know I enjoy them. It's getting late, I know I need to go to bed, but it cannot be an evening without I feel guilty that I haven't returned this book to the library. It was due three days ago, so today's the end of my grace period. I think I'm just gonna return it and then finish it on Kindle Unlimited, because honestly, I am marking this up so heavily. I've never taken notes in a book before on Kindle, but I keep highlighting things and being like, ew, jail time. It's very cathartic for me to respond to the things that this man is doing to her and be like, you ever heard of an electric chair? Give the people the review. This is Babel by, what is that author's name? R.F. Kong. R.F. Kong. Uh, it took me a really long time to read this because the first half was like a little slow and struggling for me just because I think I prefer my dark academia books to be like more intimate. And the first half of this book spans like a decade. And so there's a lot of just like jumping from moment to moment. But then the second half, Oh, it was so good. Like, this was going to be a four star, but now I think it's like a four and a half, like, rounded up to a five on Goodreads. It gave me late Miz. Um, I'm in my late Miz mode because I just saw the musical for the first time. And it was incredible. If you like language and uh, anti colonialism or, like, you know, fuck that vibe, give it a read. Anyway, that was your word from Bonnie, our sponsor. I'm like half asleep. It is because I stayed up until 3 a.m. 
reading. I got to about 50% through my dark Vanessa. I got to a point last night where I was like, I don't know how much more of this I can do. I'm curious how many people have DNF'd that book because it's difficult. And part of me feels like the book might be healing and like reaches out a hand to people who have been through the same thing. I don't know how someone who has been preyed on as a child would even be able to get through this. Like, I have never experienced anything like that, and I'm finding it hard to read, which is kind of the purpose. Like, of course, no one's reading this, like, having a field day with it, but oh my gosh. The scary thing is, I can see myself in the main character as a teenager just, like, craving validation. It makes me feel so lucky that there wasn't someone in my life like this teacher, because I could see parts of my younger self in her, and that's terrifying. Saturday and I need to get my life together. The woman was too stunned to speak. I need you to understand. <laughs> it's everywhere. Okay, towel. That's what she said. <laughs> I need you to let me brag on this shirt a little bit before I go and take out my trash. I found it while thrifting with Chanel and she let me have it. I know it is January, but it was like $5 and I'm still recovering emotionally. What a steal. It is like 75 degrees outside. I just sweat my ass off going to take out the trash. But I would be remiss if I didn't mention my other lucky thrift find recently. A flower pot that looks like a little coffee. I immediately knew I had to have this. I'm a bad plant mom. This has been in this pot for like two years and there is mold nasty. growing on the top of it. I'm gonna go take this out back and shoot it. Just kidding. I have potting soil on my balcony, so I'm a plant mother. Hi. Oh. And he is obsessed with the balcony, so maybe we'll have some balcony time. Yeah, of course I'd. I told Shelby that we'd meet at Starbucks at one o'clock to edit and journal. Don't look at the timestamp on this clip. <laughs> Okay, hi. I owe you a part of this vlog where I actually talk about reading. Earlier today, I woke up at like 10. I made pancakes and I was gonna like lay down in bed and finish my dark Vanessa. And then I fell asleep. <laughs> I slept until like 12.45 and I got a few more chapters into my book. But I'm at like 70%, which I think is significantly... Hello? Further in from when I last updated when I was like halfway in. I feel like there's a big shift halfway through. I won't spoil it. But I think in particular the thing that was added to the story that I'm really enjoying is scenes with this character's therapist. Because for the first time she's opening up about what has happened since, you know, the news is bringing up a lot of old memories. You know, this book has been infuriating the whole time because you as a reader know that it's wrong what's happening. And even when this character is in like the current times, like the 2017 chapters, she still insists like, 
like, well, it was consensual. Like, I wanted it. I'm not a victim. But as she's having these conversations with her therapist, you're able to, like, side with the therapist. And so it's like you finally have someone to root for. Things are changing. Her perception of what happened is evolving which I was just waiting and waiting and waiting for. It's a beautiful book. I've seen a lot of people rating it five stars as I update about it on Goodreads. Right now it's not sitting there for me. Like I'm enjoying it. And I think part of the reason it's hard for me to dole out five stars nowadays is because I feel like I read books over such a long time period that it like, the book feels choppy, but it's not the book's fault, it's me. <laughs> for taking so long to read it. I'm not gonna be reading for long, but I'm gonna knock out a couple more chapters and hopefully they won't make me anxious because this book can be really uncomfortable. Hi vlog. Shelby came over, we went to the library. I am 85% of the way through my book. I think I can finish it all tonight. I have a Dark Academia playlist pulled up, which feels like a mockery of this book to call it Dark Academia, which I guess it kind of is, but like, that's not the purpose. I don't think it should be classified as that, but still. What are you doing? I'm just watching YouTube videos. Clearly I'm being a very great host. I just cried a little bit. You ever read a book? And you're like, oh cool, the end of a chapter, next chapter, and then you turn the page, and it's this bitch? I was unwell. That was such a good ending. So, final review. Wow. I don't, like, I know I felt so torn about this book earlier because it's so hard to enjoy. The thing I realized and I told Shelby just now is it almost doesn't have a plot. It just is a stream of consciousness of this main character. And the journey you go on isn't necessarily from plot point to plot point. It's watching her evolve in her way of thinking. Oh my god! The ending was so good. I expected there to be a little more, but I'm not upset at how it ended. Actually, it was a really good ending and I cried. I know you already know that, but oh my gosh, I'm still like recovering from how sweet that last chapter was. I don't know what I would rate it. Probably, I've seen a lot of people do five stars and I understand. I'm not quite at a full five stars, but it might be like a 4.5 rounded up to five. I really liked it. I got a thumbs up from Shelby and I asked if you wanted to rate it and you said yes, which I like really want to tell you about how it ended, but I won't. <laughs> Oh, this is the All Too Well necklace my mom got me for Christmas. Thanks, Mom. I'm so excited to introduce the next read to the vlog. Let me go get the next <laughs> thing I'm gonna start. Wait, do you know what it is? I have no clue. Um, this is the next thing I'm reading. I have no idea what those are. Neither do I! <laughs> I lent my coworker Okay, don't come for me. I'm putting my hair back up. I don't know who I thought I was putting it down for this clip. I lent my coworker the entire Akatar series because she was like, I've read The Cruel Prince and I've read like all these iconic YA books. And I was like, okay, have you read the iconic YA book? Why? <laughs> and she said no. So I lent it to her. She loved them. And then, surprisingly, we've now started a book club, I guess, because she handed me these books that she thought I would like based on that. If you've heard of these, maybe I'm just behind. The books that True Blood was based on, what I can gather from these is it's about vampires. <laughs> she said that there is some sex in these. I can't really detect a vibe from them. She said they're like enjoyable, but not like the best thing I'll ever read. Yeah, this is not even 300 pages. I really am going into this blindly. If I look at the synopsis, it's like, this main character is a cocktail waitress in Louisiana. Gordo really needs attention right now. That was in the synopsis. Can you believe that? <laughs> oh, but she can read minds and then, no, you're telling me the love interest name in this book is Bill. <laughs> Bill, my the science guy. Bill, Bill. I hope that this book's synopsis has been revised. I don't know when this book was published, but it says, Suki's a girl who works at a bar, but she has a disability. She can read minds. And then it says, Bill has a disability of his own. He's a vampire. <laughs> You're gonna give that back to your girl. We're gonna be like, like, it was amazing. So I'm gonna give this one a shot just because I feel like in all fairness I should and like I've been kind of excited about it. I mean not because of the synopsis clearly. I've never had like a curated recommendation and it hasn't been something I've already or haven't read before. So we're gonna give it a shot. Okay this is gonna be a trip. We're gonna see if I DNF this. 
as my hot chocolate prepares. I would also like to mention I forgot I got a book at the library earlier today. Shelby and I were just browsing and then I saw Celebrity memoirs don't really stick with me that much. I've heard that this one's really good like Shelby was saying I would really enjoy it, but I probably won't read this for a few weeks if that it's on my list It's high up there. Also real quick. I need to show you the monster. I've made Gordo into This happens every time. The end. You've been listening to Dead Until Dark by Charlene Harris. Narrated by Johanna Parker. Thank you, Joanna. I just finished listening to Dead Until Dark. I feel bad that I told myself I would end the vlog after I finished this book, because this is gonna be so anticlimactic. <laughs> if you haven't guessed, I had to get this on audio to even be able to suffer through the rest of it. I shouldn't say suffer. This book was fine. I think this book is to some people what Twilight is to me, which is objectively it's not good, but if you read it around the time it came out, you probably have some emotional connection to it. I can see how this would translate into a good TV show. I'm kind of interested. I don't know that I would watch if there's more than one season. I think the moments that were supposed to be plot twists didn't really land for me. I'm also not a lover of murder mysteries, so the whole thing hinging on a serial killer, I could kind of care less. The characters didn't really have that much chemistry. For me, I was wasn't really following this for the plot or the romance, which people had reviewed this and been like, oh, it's just gratuitous violence and sex. And honestly, like all of that reads very monotone to me because I'm not reading this for the plot. I'm reading it for like the character's narration, which is very Southern, especially after the audiobook where like the narrator makes her very Southern. So like parts of that is fun, but then you also get the parts that are pretty dated, um, <laughs> says things that I would not repeat. I mean, I told you earlier, she describes the ability to read minds as a disability. There's other things in this that I'm like, ooh. I think I'm gonna give it like a 2.5 stars. I feel really bad because I have the two sequels. And honestly, I wouldn't be opposed to listening to them because listening definitely made it a lot more fun and I could like zone out on the parts I didn't care about. But I also don't want to spend my scribbed credits on these audiobooks, which honestly, can we talk about Scribd really quick? Let me pause my review. What is the deal? <laughs> I have Scribd, but I have no idea what their audiobook model is now. So I'm always too scared to use the audiobook. So I just use it for eBooks. Is it unlimited like it used to be? Or do you only get a certain amount per month? I could just Google this but I'm asking you instead, because I know some of y'all use Scribd. And by the way, I've told myself that I'm not gonna do sponsorships. I'm not gonna accept books for review unless it is something that I already use, have used, I miss, or like extenuating circumstances. Scribd is one of them. Scribd, if you want to sponsor me, my email is winningnovels.gmail.com. Thank you. Anyway, she's done. And so am I. It just, it like lacked any depth for me. Even the sex was boring and monotone and it was very like, oh, my virginity, like. <laughs> the southernness of it. At one point she was like, oh my god, I have to pray and apologize to taking God's name in vain. Little old white lady writing this book. And apparently it's like a 15 book series. Gordo, we don't have time for that, huh bud? Yeah, it is 1.20 a.m. and he is ready to go to bed, so. Let me know if you've seen the TV show, how it compares. Uh, and that's vlog number one, down, well, two. Vlog number whatever down. If I hold Gordo up to the camera, he's gonna get upset, but I think we must. Here he is. Oh, sweet handsome. Can you say goodnight to everybody? Wito says goodnight. You're so handsome. Okay. Bye.